Good afternoon, everyone. I am Marion Bernard, Experimentation Director at CARA, and uh, I wish you a good afternoon, um, and I welcome you at this round table titled How to Loop with a New Generation of Secondhand Products. Indeed, the reuse or reemployment contributes to the extension of products life duration and takes part in the circular economy and the reduction of waste production. But thanks to our guests, you may discover some other additional benefits in developing reuse activities. During the exchange with uh, our guests that is going to follow, do not hesitate to ask your question on the chat and then we will submit them at the end of this question and answer session. We are pleased to receive, on one hand from Renault Trucks, Laurent Colpier, Vice President Youth Trucks, Jackie Chapelle, Director, Customers Adaptation Bourg Factory from Renault Trucks, and Henrik Larcher, Director, Youth Truck, Renault Trucks France. On the other hand, from <coughs> Automotive Recycling, we have today Loïc Berrosé, CEO, and Régis Poulet, Hello. Sales and Network Manager, both involved in the resource project located at Romorantin. To introduce those reuse projects, I propose to have a look at those short videos. arriving. <laughs> So this was a time lapse at the used truck factory uh, of Renault Trucks at bourg bresse We are now going to have a look at the resource process of Indra. When a vehicle enters an authorized treatment facility for end-of-life vehicle, it is registered administratively and entered in a police book. So each vehicle is allocated a number, which is transformed into a barcode providing its traceability. At the end of the process, it will be destroyed, in particular physically, but also administratively. The authorized facility then ensures the safety of the vehicle. That's the neutralization of all the pyrotechnic components, airbag, seatbelt pretensioner.
After this step comes the depollution. That's the removal of all the liquids present in the vehicle, fuel, coolant, brake fluid, etc. They will then be collected for reprocessing. Intra's engineering department organizes the dismantling of the vehicle into seven industrial steps. This breakdown of the dismantling using specific tools facilitates access to the various parts and components of the vehicle, making it possible to achieve a higher than 97% recyclability rate. This process simultaneously optimizes dismantling techniques and quality, productivity, ergonomics, and workstation safety. The secondhand spare parts are intended for sale to individuals or professionals. The extracted raw materials are processed and directed to specific sectors. The waste from the depollution is recovered by authorized specialist companies. After those teasing videos, let us start questioning our guests. So, Mr. Berose from Indra, can you explain for those who are not fully familiar with Indra, what are its historical and actual activities? So, thank you. First of all, I'm very proud to be with you uh, today and to, to can explain what is our company. We organize around four main businesses. The first one which is the most important in this is the sourcing of end of life vehicle to provide a network of dismantlers. To do that, we make agreement with insurers, companies, car manufacturers, impounds, collectivities, everywhere you could find a deposit of end of life vehicle. The second one consists to manage a network of dismantlers. There are 350 in France. To achieve 95% recyclability rate, of the mass of a vehicle. The third one is our engineering department, and I come back to explain to you a letter, uh, what is the activities of this department. And we have two dismantling sites in order to have a good understanding of the business model of our, our network, which is the fourth business uh, of Indra. I hope I was clear. Thank you. And since when Indra uh, started? 1980. So, uh, when when Indra started? Yeah. This is your question. Yeah. In 1985. Okay. But the but we 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 changed the business model uh, when I arrived ten years ago in uh, in Indra Indra Automobile Recycling with my team, and we changed all the business model and. Uh, what you have seen is a new business model, new organization uh, since 10 years. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Colpier uh, from Runner Truck Side, can you tell us uh, a bit more uh, to get more knowledge of your company? Yes, of course. Thank you. First of all, uh, very proud to be there with uh, Emric and Jackie also. Um, to make it short, uh, Runner Trucks. History started in 1894, so quite a long time ago, with Berlier here in Lyon, France. And we are still there uh, as the leading uh, truck manufacturer in France, of course, with uh, both uh, engineering uh, site here in Lyon, also uh, our used truck center that Emeric, I think, is located right now, and uh, our plants, manufacturing plants in bourg en bresse Blainville, and even in, in Vénissieux. Uh, for sure, Renault Trucks is a, a leading man truck manufacturer in, in Europe, part of the Volvo Group uh, since 2001, and uh, selling uh, yearly, uh, normal year, about uh, 50,000 uh, new vehicles uh, from uh, light commercial vehicle to heavy duty vehicles uh, and uh, 
about, let's say, 10,000 uh, used trucks, units, and uh, focusing now on increasing uh, services revenue, of course, and looking now for sure on uh, uh, circular economy, grabbing uh, different business opportunity there uh, and uh, executing a strategy to be uh, more sustainable, of course. So in short, this is one of trucks today. And again, very proud to be there and to share with you our experiences. Thank you. Next question, a bit more focused. Um, can you let us know a bit more about the Use Track uh, project? Uh, how did it, uh, how, how did it was born, and and how did it grow? <laughs> yes, for sure. So, uh, you know, all the time uh, things started from ideas, and in that case, it was an idea that. Uh, we should be able to be competitive in transforming our vehicle. And at the origin of that, there is a need uh, to increase the diversity of our offer of used trucks. For those not familiar with that, so basically from a truck manufacturer like us, uh, we have a lot of uh, what we call tractors uh, in our portfolio, in our stock. They more or less look all the same. They are coming for big fleets. Uh, they often are white. Uh, and what we call four by two tractors. And we need to resell them on the, as a used truck the, for their second life. And having the same kind of vehicles with high volumes uh, saturate the market and it's not a good thing. So the idea behind that was to be able to diversify this offer by transforming these tractors. And you have one example behind me, uh, transforming the tractor that are mainly uh, aim for long goal so international transport, into a different kind of application, so making them repurpose them. And this is what we have started to do step by step uh, from 2017, uh, transforming the tractor aiming for long goal into uh, tractors for constructions, for example, like the X-Road behind me, but also, and that was the video, uh, going much further in transforming tractor into rigid, uh, aiming for a uh, regional application, and this is what Emric has behind him, uh, the T-Road. And step by step, uh, using uh, the resources of our engineering department in Lyon, and above all, uh, the capacity of the factory in, in Bourg-en-Bresse and the Customer Adaptation Center, uh, we were able to grow that, of course, with a strong cooperation, collaboration <coughs> push from the commercial organization, to go from zero, let's say, vehicle in 2017 to about uh, 500 units right now. So in short, this is the what we call the use truck factory as today. Thank you. On the Indra side, Mr. Poulet, um, why and how do you deal with uh, recycling and, and reuse? So the regulations uh, on extended producer responsibility require automobile manufacturers to constitute and manage a network of end-of-life vehicle centers, guaranteeing the regulatory coverage of the French territory, to achieve 95% of vehicle recycling, and be responsible for the economic balance of the sector. These obligations are delegated to us by contracts with a few manufacturers all our actions are geared towards achieving these objectives. And uh, Mr. Berose? Yeah. Yeah. I don't sleep. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, to do so, to do so, what they, what they say, Mr. Mr. Regis Puri, to do so, our engineering department is in charge of research and development and tools and then raw materials. We have a training center dedicated to the dismantlers. We sell tools and dismantling turnkey plans, and we do consulting for countries where the end-of-life vehicle sector is completely informal. Beyond this, Every dismantler are organized to remove the good reuse parts to sell them to the body shop via the sale desk or different web site dedicated, which is very new for them uh, uh, today. 
uh, you have a big mutation between what happens, uh, what it happened uh, 10 years ago and now, because 80% uh, uh, of the 80% of the trade uh, of the reuse parts is at the at the sale desk 10 years ago, and now 80% are on the website. This is a very very big re revolution for the for this for the dismantlers. This to save some cars we can't uh, fix only with new parts. This is very the goal. It's not to 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 have a competition with the new parts. Uh, the 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 reuse parts. It's uh, uh, a new market, and it's not the competitor of the new parts. It is what what you have to understand very well. Okay. Yeah, they are complementary activities. Yeah. Uh, more than technical ventures, um, this project seems also to be human ventures. So, on in her side, Mr. Poulet, what are the specific competences and training required to deal with uh, dismantling and, and reuse activities? Beyond the regulatory aspect, we also offer services and solutions to our partners, such as specific modules to handling electric vehicles, for eco-design, or for the evacuation of forsaken vehicles. Yes, I want just to add something. The, you have to understand that the main problem is to manage 360 degrees of the LV sector, knowing that you can't duplicate anything when you speak about environment. It's impossible to duplicate some, something when you discuss uh, about environment. Indeed, countries have their own culture, their own logistics, their own problems that must resolve with proper solutions. This is, this is, this is our goal when we went, when we go to a new country and to explain to the government how to to organize the uh, the the the, 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 the LV sector. We can't duplicate anything. To do so, we develop partnership with a well-known company as a Renault to develop the reuse part in their network. MTB, which is a recycling company, to develop short loop around the cable and uh, and the dismantling of electric motors to recover uh, certain materials. We have also a new partnership with Renault, Renault Trucks uh, to imagine how to sell reuse parts, uh, reuse spare parts to fix trucks and to link our specialized network with their dealer. And we work with Renault Trucks for two years now around this problem. Thank you. Um, Mr. Larche, on your side, can you tell us a bit more about your strategy and also the, those forcing uh, circular strategy, I would say? So, uh, hello everyone, very pleased to be with you uh, as well. Um, so first, uh, as uh, Laurent was saying, it started with people having ideas. It started in a startup mode where we involved people from the plant, people from the sales, we involved customers, and then we tested the ideas. Uh, fortunately, we had a very positive uh, feedback from the market connected to those transformations, X-Road and P-Road. And, and now we are in a phase where we are structuring or offer when it comes to circular economy in order to ramp up in terms of volumes. So our offer is getting structured into three different blocks. So block one is reuse. So it's basically we take a used vehicle or we take a used parts and then we recondition uh, the trucks or the parts in order to optimize its performance. So for example, at Renault Trucks, we offer reconditioned tractors. So it's, it's tractors like uh, behind uh, uh, Laurent, 4x2, we reconditioned them in, in 4x2 again in order to optimize their fuel consumption, in order to optimize uh, their maintenance costs. So this is the first part of our offer around reuse. The second block is around repurpose. 
So this is what uh, Laurent was explaining with X-Road or P-Road. We take a standard trucks and then we modify it in order to meet a specific market need, in order to meet a specific customer, uh, customer need. And this is what you have behind me, for example, P-Road tractor to, 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 to rigid or what is behind Laurent a tractor uh, that is a, a, a specific application for, for, for construction. We are as well looking into transforming uh, diesel trucks into some uh, battery or hydrogen uh, power trucks in order to meet uh, the, 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 the future needs. The third block is around recycling. Uh, and here we are dismantling trucks in order to develop or, or use parts uh, offer. And uh, in that aspect, as it was said, we are developing a partnership uh, with Indra in order to explore further this, uh, this opportunity. Thank you. And what makes it successful for your customer? So what, what makes it successful for our customer? First, it's, uh, it's, we, are, we are pushing to the market some competitive used offers. Uh, first, they meet the quality and the reliability expectations. At you, as you saw on the movie, it's really, it's really quality standard as a new quality standards from the plants as for a new trucks. And in fact, with those products, we offer the same warranty and the same service contract as a new trucks. The second thing is that it's ready to go solutions. Uh, it's uh, basically quicker lead time uh, to bring to the customer uh, reconditioned or transformed offer sometimes compared to a new. So uh, those two key aspects uh, make it, uh, I would say, uh, uh, a key differentiator for our customers. And as well, I mean, we see our customers that are focusing more and more on sustainability. They put more and more value behind uh, saving resources, saving CO2. Uh, and of course, this offer has a, has a positive impact uh, from a, a, an environmental point of view. Thank you. From strategy, I propose now to go a bit more to the operational. We have uh, Jackie Chappelle uh, from uh, Wolf Factory. Mr. Chappelle, uh, can you tell us how did uh, this uh, project impacted uh, the standard organization or your usual organization at customers' adaptation? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so when we launched this idea to transform uh, your structure, Everybody in the plant uh, uh, was very excited, for sure. On the customer adaptation side, uh, it, it was an additional and complementary activity. And the designer very, very quickly uh, saw the, the opportunity uh, to go deeper in their uh, technical knowledge. And directly on the workshop, uh, the operator were and are always very, very proud to give a, a second life to the struts. And for them, it's a very, very interesting uh, job using their strong skills. On the plant side, even if we had some solution to manage, because it's a, a non-activity, uh, it's a non-standard activity, we especially saw all the new opportunity in terms of career uh, we could offer to our uh, assembly operators. Thank you. On Indra's side, what can you tell us about competences uh, and training? Sorry, I have cut the <laughs> micro. I said, in order to achieve our objectives, we have developed tools for our network both for the marketing and use parts and for the sourcing of private vehicles. We have adapted the skills for our employees to support the development of our company and the evolution of the market. Like the tendency to the favor of reemployment or the obligation to have your vehicle recycled in approved vehicle end of life centers. Okay, thank you. Um, to conclude this uh, exchange, before going to the question uh, of our uh, auditory, um, 
Can you let us know what are, from your point of view, the main stakes, pitfall, and opportunities that such experience gave your company to discover? And would you have maybe any advice for those who were inspired and who would want to start such venture? Uh, Mr. Berose, some some words? Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. As I say, the, the beginning of the meeting. Uh, I would say that the main challenge of Indra is to con consist, to change the business model. This is very important for our company. And uh, all my team uh, understood what, uh, what is the goal, what is the target to, to, to do so. Uh, and uh, the business relying on the different skills of the teams. We have a lot of skills here. And, uh, uh, and really, it's a... Uh, uh, a teamwork to to change this business model and to to have now uh, an, an international strategy uh, with uh, a lot of countries uh, uh, which are very very interested by our our competences uh, because as I said to, to a few minutes ago uh, the the problem is to have 360 degrees of a view of the of the informal sector uh, it's you push a system you don't push the parameters of the system you push a system and the, and the, this is why the, the we have a little success with uh, uh, a lot of countries like india morocco uh, uh, turkey uh, uh, and uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh. Okay, thank you. Mr. Colpier, on run the track side, any advice, feedback? Yeah, I think for, for us, the, I said the, the learning, uh, meaning that we are yeah. quite a large company, but really to be able to, to be agile, uh, as Emric was saying, uh, having a startup mindset. Uh, and this was possible because we had a, a trust and autonomy given by our top management. The right to fail also is important. So sometimes things are not working, so we are developing an offer and, and we are ready to stop it immediately. And we have done. Uh, but we have succeeded in uh, growing for this uh, startup mode to uh, having now a more clear strategy with the reuse, the repurpose and the recycle uh, pillars of our circular economy strategy that we are now executing. Uh, and uh, we hope we will grow. So it's really startup mode agility. And to finish, of course, collaboration that you see here with us three, but there are many people behind. But uh, with the commercial, with more the marketing that I represent and the industrial part with, uh, with Jackie, uh, three different worlds working together, using the assets that we have and uh, much more than uh, that we have done previously is really the, the recipe for us at least to, to succeed with this. I would say to finish, yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I, I propose to have a look at the question that we get into the chat. So I'm going to literally uh, ask them to you. <laughs> so is the hydrogen ice part uh, of the ways, sorry, explore to reuse and upgrade traditional, I mean, are you studying uh, retrofitting the, the engine, like from diesel engine to uh, hydrogen uh, combustion engine? I, I Question can, more for the I suppose. <laughs> yeah, uh, so right now in, in our plan, we have the retrofit from diesel to, uh, to biodiesel. That's something we, we have, we can make, and we are making, so that's one step. The second is a retrofit to electric, as I was saying, with the battery electric that we are studying. Uh, it's, uh, it, it seems easy, but it's quite complicated, but we, I think we'll succeed in all our tracks. And that third is the hydrogen. So I think the question is about burning hydrogen in the, in the diesel motor. We are not investigating that for the moment, but we have a strategy with the fuel cell uh, based on, a, let's say, electric vehicle, but that's for a couple of years ahead of us, uh, I would say not yet with the hydrogen, uh, combustion of hydrogen as, uh, in our engine. Okay, thank you. Uh, now a question that is more for Indra. 
vehicle equipments are more and more complex and miniaturized, so very small, <laughs> can it be a problem for recycling? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's not the problem of the recycling is not the min min miniaturization. Uh, this is not a problem. The problem is when you mix a lot of plastic between us. Uh, when you have, when you don't have the same quality of the plastics, you have. This is a very a, a great pity for us. You have to separate, and it's not an easy way to separate certain plastics between us. Uh, when you mix polyamide and uh, and uh, uh, polypropylene, and you you uh, uh, you have the, the both uh, completely integrate. Uh, it's complicated to, 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 to separate that. This is the main problem of, of the recycling, yeah? of the, of, uh, to recycle a, a car or a truck. I imagine that it is part of your exchange with the um, manufacturer of car or trucks uh, for the conception. Do you give any guidelines uh, for them so that they can they can design accordingly to the requirements you have after for recycling. Yes, this is what I, this is what I tried to describe Regis Poulet uh, uh, a few minutes ago. It concerned the eco the eco conception of the car. Uh, we try to be uh, very close with uh, a car manufacturer on that subject, of course, which is very important to. To, to have a good treatment and a good uh, recycling rate ten years ten years after, uh, we work a lot. Of, uh, we work a lot with car manufacturer on on this subject. Yes. And can you tell us what is the bigger difference um, in recycling a truck compared to a personal car? Um, is there any? Um, problematic of uh, recycling that are very different in terms of process? Uh. This is a question for my, for, for my uh, uh, engineering manager, but I try to understand, I try, I'm going to try to answer. I don't think so you have a lot of, a lot of difference between. Uh, the difference is to reach the economic balance uh, when you when you d recycle a car, you have a lot of car in the market, so uh, you you can find very easy uh, the the a, a marketplace for the used parts. It's quite different for the for the for the trucks. Uh, uh, this is why we are uh, with Renault trucks on study on that. Uh, but uh, uh, but. The difference is, of course, the weight of the the weight of the of the spare parts is not is not the same weight. It's, it's a very uh, 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 so uh, the the tools are different, uh, the process are different, of course, but uh, the the way is the same, more or less. Okay. I'm sure if I ask to my engineering, uh, to my to my manager of engineering, they say no, it's completely different. You know, uh, you have a lot of things, a lot of details. Of course, you have details, but I, I can't explain that. Of course, no I'm so sorry for that. And um, um, one other question that you might have partially answered, but it's re-asked, and, and maybe uh, it brings to a larger open question. Uh, do you think that the recycling activities that are now foreseen, not only uh, mandatory, but also, um, I would say, <laughs> necessary for the environmental uh, challenge that we have to face, uh, may influence the design of the new product in the future? Do you think that, like, uh, it first has been the constructor, manufacturer, who decided that design and you adapt, but maybe now, is it, is it, isn't it going to reverse? You are going <laughs> to give your requirements in terms of recycling and they will adapt their design. This is a question for Renault Trucks, I think. Ah, so, <laughs> this is uh, Laurent, sorry. <laughs> No, or or yeah, maybe from the operational. Uh... <laughs> no, but we, we always have had uh, let's say requirements on uh, let's say recycling and 
I think all on our products uh, we have uh, we guarantee a recycling level. Uh, I think it's 85 percent of the vehicle. And as, as we say, when we talk about a tractor, it's a 7.5 ton. Uh, it's not a car, so it's, uh, it's a five times more. So if you take in terms of metal, plastic, uh, and, and others, uh, you can see the difference for sure. So. I, I will not say that we, we are doing things perfectly, but it's not it's not part starting today. It has started uh, many years ago with recyclability, uh, uh, usage of uh, let's say uh, different materials uh, that are much more environmental friendly, uh, uh, chemical regulation, and all that uh, that we are taking into account for quite a long time, uh, and we are working with that now more and more to more uh, help to uh, disassembly to. Uh, it's a design for aftermarket, design for uh, recycling also. Okay, thank you. Sorry, we have lost uh, some video, some problem of connection maybe. Oh, yeah, Robert Trek is back. <laughs> thank you uh, very much. There is no more uh, question from the audience. We hope that, uh, that they, they were uh, interested in those ventures. Um, so I wish you a good day and I want to inform you that you will find the replay of the conference in the conference hall of the Automotive Tech Days uh, and also in the video library. So in order to get some uh, replay, if you want to review <laughs> this nice interview. Thank you very much, Thank everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you and so much. I hope that will uh, give some uh, nice idea of reuse projects. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye. Bye.